Your TA Indiana really loves pump curve problems because they give you a glimpse into a real thing that you could really imagine engineers actually doing. So imagine in your facility, you need to pump water from one tank to another, and your boss asks you what size pump do you need to order? So the thing with pumps is they don't actually tell you what flow rate you're gonna get from them. Instead, the manufacturer is actually going to publish a pump curve because pumps behavior will be slightly different in every different system. The same model pump can provide a really high pressure at a low volumetric flow rate, or as volumetric flow rate increases, they can provide a high flow rate at a lower pressure. And so the actual flow rate in your specific system will vary depending on that equilibrium. And so it's your responsibility as an engineer to plot the characteristic system curve on top of a pump curve. Because for a system, the behavior is opposite of pumps. As flow rate increases through your system, you'll get more losses due to friction, right? Head loss will increase. And therefore, the larger the flow rate, the more pressure you need the pump to provide. So while a pump curve will start off high and then decrease, right, as more flow, less pressure, a system curve will start off low and increase. That is, as flow rate increases, the head loss increases. And so wherever those two curves meet, that is what your final actual system behavior will be. And to evaluate whether this pump is a good fit, you'll just check whether or not that's actually the flow rate that you want for your system. And if you're given a pump curve like this one that has efficiency listed, you'll check as to whether the pump is actually behaving at or near its peak efficiency, since efficiency will be related to electricity bills. A pump behaving at a low efficiency level, you might actually be better off getting a smaller pump that will be more efficient, where you can use the same flow rate but use less electricity. You're gonna solve this same problem twice. So the first version will be with everything given where you can kind of learn the concept. And then the second version will tweak a little to be more realistic, where you'll have to solve for more things. That's more likely what you'll see on a homework or a test question. System curve starts with the energy equation. Start with point one at the top of the left tank and point two at the top of the right tank and just write out the energy equation, which is essentially the Bernoulli equation with extra terms, head loss and energy added by the pump. And look at your axis. You've got flow rate on the horizontal axis and you've got pump head on the vertical axis. That means you wanna rearrange this energy equation so you get pump head by itself on the left side of the equation and the right side of the equation needs to all be in terms of Q. Just like a regular plot would be like y equals mx plus b, where instead of y by itself, you've got head, the vertical axis, and the right side, instead of x, you've got q. So since both points one and two are the top of a tank, we can cancel out pressure. Both sides will be at atmospheric pressure. If we assume that the tanks are rising and falling their levels very slowly, even though there's velocity happening in the pipes in between them, the velocities of the tanks themselves would be approximately zero. So we can cross off the velocity terms of the Bernoulli equation. I can call my datum zero at point one. So I've got a height of 10 feet over on the right-hand side, point two. And the right-hand side is also where I put my head loss, my major losses due to friction and minor losses due to all the other stuff, corners and whatnot. After crossing everything out, my pump head is equal to 10 plus my friction term plus my minor losses. The friction term is that darcy Weibach equation. And then minor losses, kv squared over 2g. So in this very unrealistic, easier version, you've been given the friction coefficient, 0 0.02, also given all of the minor loss coefficients. So we just plug those numbers in, and since velocity is Q divided by A, and then velocity squared is Q squared divided by A squared, that's how we're getting flow rate into this equation. We're replacing the velocity terms with flow rate terms. And being super careful to use G of 32.2, since this problem is in English units and not SI units, and Bam, this is the system curve. Pump head will be 10 plus 4.4 Q squared. But what units is this value of Q in right now? My velocity was in feet per second and my area was in feet squared. So my Q is actually in cubic feet per second, which does not match the X axis of the plot, which is in gallons per minute. 
And every online gamer who's not a noob will remember that the conversion from gallons to feet cubed is gonna be 0.1337. So 0.1337 is leet, right? That is the conversion. That's how many cubic feet are in one gallon. So definitely my conversion factor. I never remember BTUs, but I always remember gallons to cubic feet. So after doing the conversion, we've got a whole ton of zeros in this equation. Let's see if I can read off the right number. 10 plus 0. 0.0000219 Q squared. <laughs> so if we just plug in a couple different values for Q, maybe one on the left side, one on the right side, and one in the middle, we can get a pretty good idea of what the system curve looks like. And in fact, we can actually plug in Q of zero will be the easiest one to just get right on the axis. Q is just gonna equal 10 at a flow rate of zero. Flow rate of 400 gives us 13.52 head loss. At 1200 gallons per minute, we've got about 41 units of head loss that the pump is gonna have to provide. And at 2000 gallons per minute, we're up around 98 feet of head loss. So as I plot that curve, it looks like our system curve intersects the pump curve right at like 1600 gallons per minute. So I wanna plot one more point that's actually really close to the curve to make sure that my drawing is actually good. And we get that out of flow rate of 1600, we get 66.3 for the pump head. And that looks about right. So this is a pretty good guess, flow rate of 1600. So would this be a good choice of pump? Well, first thing is, is 1600 gallons per minute fast enough? Like, is that enough flow rate for, if we're pumping from tank to tank, is that enough? So one thing we don't know for this problem is whether 1600 is actually gonna work for the application. Like, are we time limited? Do we wanna try to get this move from one tank to the other in a certain amount of time? But if we assume that 1600 is a flow rate that we can work with, then this pump is a good choice. The maximum value for efficiency, we can see this peak is right around 87%. And the flow rate we're working at is really close to that. If we go up at 1600 gallons per minute, we're at about an 85% efficiency, which is really close to the peak. So anything between about 1400 gallons per minute and 2200 gallons per minute is probably a good use for this pump. Kind of in that area of the curve, all pretty close to peak efficiency, it's a good time for this pump. So your TA Indy is perched back on his hamster wheel because he knows that this problem was set up way too easy and that your professor would never be this easy on you. In reality, you would have to find your own friction coefficient and you would have to find your own minor loss coefficients. So let's take a really quick break to play with your TA Indy and then go through this problem one more time really quickly just to show how you could find those values F and for minor losses and to see what the system curve would look like in that case. So friction coefficient first, and the rough thing for this is that you'll actually get a different friction coefficient at each flow rate. Because each volumetric flow rate is gonna to correspond to a different velocity, which means a different Reynolds number, which means a different friction coefficient. So what I would recommend in this case is that you solve for a friction coefficient at a low flow rate, like around 400, and a friction coefficient at a higher flow rate, around 2000, and those might not be that far apart. And for values in between, you can just kind of interpolate in between rather than just rerunning it every single time for every point. 400 gallons per minute, V is Q divided by A. You get a velocity of about 4.5 feet per second. Wasn't given temperature for this problem. So if I assume a standard temperature of 60 degrees Fahrenheit, I can look up viscosity. Gets me a Reynolds number of 1.9 times 10 to the six. Also wasn't given information about what the pipe was made out of, but let's suppose we knew that it was commercial steel. I can grab the equivalent roughness factor from a table and get 0 0.0003 for the value on the, the roughness coefficient over on the right hand side of the table. So if I match up these lines, looks like a friction value of around 0 0.0152. So I'll repeat this process for 2000 gallons per minute, which is gonna be a faster speed, right? It'll be five times faster, so 22.7 feet per second. And so the Reynolds number will also then be five times larger because same viscosity. So 9.5 times 10 to the six. No change in the roughness coefficient. So 9.5 times 10 to the six is right next to where it says 10 to the seven on the Moody diagram. Because where it says 10 to the seven, that's one times 10 to the seven. And so this part of the curve is actually pretty flat. So I get a friction value here that's pretty close. Looks like about 0 0.0147. So we've got actually a really tight range of friction values. So we probably don't need to recalculate for every number in, in the middle. And in fact, if we actually just use like 0.015 for all of them, that would get us pretty close to the answer also. 
Now for minor loss, there's basically have three minor losses in this problem. We've got the entrance, we've got the 90 degree bend, and then we've got the exit. So looking at this picture, this looks like a re-entrant entrance. That's where the pipe is actually sticking into the tank. That's called a re-entrant. And in my table, this would have a K value of 0 0.8, not 0 0.5. 0 0.5 would refer to a regular square edged entrance. And even checking different textbooks, they were all kind of the same number. So I'm gonna use 0 0.8 for the entrance instead of the loss of 0.5 that shows on the picture. So the K value on the figure of 1.5 does match this table that I have with a threaded rod 90 degree angle. So I am gonna use that number still in my calculations, but if I were solving this completely from scratch, I would probably not use that number. First, six inch pipe is pretty big for threaded rod and also it's 200 feet long. I think it's, it may be more likely that this might actually be a flanged connection. And also if you check different textbooks, threaded rods for 90 degree angles, some other textbooks are gonna have that at a much smaller value like 0.9. So I think realistically, some value more like 0 0.3 to 0 0.9 is probably more correct for this minor loss. I'll stick with the 1.5 for here because I do have that value in a table, so it, it could be justified. The last minor loss source will be the, the exit, right? The sudden expansion into the tank. And since that's square edged, uh, this table that I have in my book here shows that a minor loss K value of one does work for that. So if I do a whole bunch of calculator work with all of mostly the same numbers, but I have a different factor for F and I'm also using a different factor of 0.8 for this minor loss at the re-entrant entrance, I get a slightly modified version of the pump head equation. For the value of Q at 400, I get 13 feet. And for the Q value of 2000, where I solve the other friction coefficient, I get a value of around 83 feet. So my new system curve is a lot different than the old one, mainly because the friction factor is so much smaller on this one. However, since I only plotted two points, my curve might not be very good. So it looks like my curve crosses the line at about 1750 for the volumetric flow rate in gallons per minute. So to check whether that makes sense, I wanna plot another point at 1750 and see if it actually is close to the pump curve line. So since 1750 is pretty close to the 2000, I'm not gonna go calculate another Reynolds number. I'm just gonna use 0.0148 as my friction coefficient, which is pretty close to the 2000 number, but in between the two. And I get a pump head of 66.5. Now, when I plot that on the drawing, that point is noticeably above the pump curve. So this means I need to redraw my line to be a little bit more accurate to be able to see a little bit better where the answer probably is. And with the new line, it looks like it's actually closer to Q of 1700 gallons per minute. So if I use the same friction coefficient this time, it should be at a pump head of 63.3. And this looks like it does match the pump curve now. So in this new version of the problem, where I come with my own friction loss coefficient and my own minor loss coefficients, I get a volumetric flow rate of 1700 gallons per minute, which is gonna be even closer to maximum efficiency, probably closer to 86% this time. So also still a, a definitely a good choice of pump. So if you think your TA Indy is being really patient back there waiting for us to finish up, go ahead and hit the thumbs up and I'll head back and play with him. And if you wanna look at another video where you can get more practice using the Moody diagram, then click this one up on the screen now.